Our hardscape is in. Our retention walls are set. And now we get to complete the picture with salt tolerant plants and night lighting. We'll complete this project on today's Designer's Landscape. It would be a good point to really reflect on all the work that we did last time. And when we came to the site, naturally we had this big dune, which is really a, a sand dune going to the ocean side here between these two homes. As you go back and reflect, you'll see the work that we've applied here. And that was to provide this retaining wall and steps, as well as brick paver walk or ramp uh, to navigate through here. So we feel like that's kind of doing the accomplishment. Little walls over here, left and right, to again, balance the look as well as stabilize uh, from what would be really a big washes that have occurred here through time. Uh, originally, we thought about having a step where you are and another step here, but we changed that concept uh, to develop what we call the ramp. In other words, once you navigate through the steps that you came on, uh, then no more steps all the way up to this point. Homeowners here have a, a back patio and so we thought it'd be nice too to end up with a, a little landing, a little presentation that keeps you nice and level uh, before you go down or when you come up that you get a point to stop here. Now as we apply landscape, which is naturally what we'll do to, uh, to decorate things, this area should look better and I mentioned last time this area should change drastically. It already has. With the installation of our East Palatka hollies, uh, we've chosen this variety, as well as many that we will today, uh, dealing with their salt tolerance. Salt tolerant varieties will definitely play an important part in our decision for plant types that we'll use today. Our first salt tolerant plant we'll talk about is the Ligustrum family. This is Ligustrum recurvifolium. Now, if you look at the foliage, it has a little dimple or curve to the leaf but Ligustrum lucidum, Ligustrum japonicum, as well as the recurvifolia, three Ligustrum varieties that are all salt tolerant. Usually uh, you denote salt tolerance to a thick waxy leaf. That's not always the case, but that could be one generality. Um, I'm not sure that we'll use these here. I know if you jump across the walkway with these big AC units, the idea on these is that we get them positioned or repositioned so that they somehow get up and break and screen and buffer, if you will, the hardware section of the walk on the neighbor's side. Oh, down here to my right, we used holly trees as our specimen. This is Ilex burfordi, um, one of the many varieties of hollies that are very salt tolerant. They will go out on the ocean side and take salt drift as well as salt spray. So th that'll be good here with the low lighted situation. I just want to get up tall a little bit, if you will. And then we'll really use low plants so we can accent our walkway. We've got green trees, green ligustrum, green holly. I think now we need to work on a little bit of color. We've actually got, as well as a salt situation to consider, a sun and shade situation. Between the two homes here, we don't get a lot of sunlight. But as we come out into here into the open, we do. So uh, colorful lantana, this plant, is very salt tolerant. It loves the heat or the hot spots in the yard. So a full sun situation is naturally going to be applicable for it. And then behind me, I plan on mixing by the entryway a combination of a kunti palm as well as the Aztec grass. We want to mix up our colors in the foliage so that when this is mulched, we have a built-in variety of highlight. And I can't wait to watch that develop. Now we haven't talked too much about the color of the retention wall and the brick we've used, but in order to tie in with the taupe tan or gray color of the house, we've used a variety of brick that does that well. I feel like the Aztec here is going to, close to the walk, is going to provide a nice contrast. Really anything we use, green would look good too. I have in front of me here a plant, Zamia integrifolia. Uh, commonly called a kunti palm. It's not really a palm. It's not in the palm family. 
but it is a, a native to the, the southeastern United States. And these wonderful little cones you see at the base are where the seeds develop. I've seen this plant used in right-of-ways, on highways, uh, as well as here with the salt tolerance that it has is going to supply this low lush of green color year-round uh, for our landscape. So the Kunti palm I plan on setting underneath here, crossing over the driveway with the Aztec in front. Now I want you to observe what we've done here with the Aztec grass and the Kuntis on the inside. I'm, I'm trying to accomplish a little push across the driveway so that, in other words, with our plantings, even though this has wall and the walkway, it doesn't look so separate or different. If we put different plants over here, then from this side, we'd, we'd be building in the division. Instead, we want to build in continuity. Wouldn't that make sense? Can you see the circulation or the movement of the Aztec grass across and the Kuntis behind me here? Now, what we need to do is jump across the driveway, and I'll, I think you'll see them tie in there as well. Friends, I believe this can only be achieved with landscape, uh, this continuity or pulling in together. We have a little narrow bed here, but we don't want to lock our view out. We want to enhance it. And can you see the movement here? We've even left a little gap or space that will be mulched. And for maintenance purposes, as well as attracting our attention through here, can you see how this mulch path will lead through to our paver path and take us right up the hill? It's interesting. Now, I really like what this tree is doing for uh, our whole upper layer here, if you will. And we've got the fireplace coming out, and this, this will be allowed to really, is it too close to the house? Well, we've got to have room for the walkway, and these hollies can be pruned in any shape. So you could just let that kind of go up or let it come out, and you could round it with time. Our goal of this second tree was to really soften or hide the air conditioner units that the neighbors have that are sitting above the ground. Do, would you agree that they are doing that? We do have a curve in our walk. I know you, I hope you've noticed that. And so what we will not do is just run our plants in straight lines in a row up there. Our thought or concept would be to cross over or kind of mimic and enhance the curvilinear pattern as we go up. We don't really need a lot of tall plants in here. We want to screen the air conditioner with a, maybe a medium shrub. You see this blank wall We'll maybe go a little taller in here, but as we get down into what is kind of our, our planter situation, in other words, uh, where this wall comes in, I really think we can use medium or intermediate and lower plants here. And that should work, even down here. What we kind of call this uh, our landing area, if you will, and this specimen is doing so much uh, of changing the look uh, front on. So we don't need a tall plant here, just something low and something low here. Uh, our goal again is to kind of screen or soften but not completely block out the wall. So low plants in here to really uh, accent the column. I, I think the Aztec grass is going to bounce really well off of this. Uh, Lantana. We're going to be talking about salt tolerant varieties here because we have some salt drift that's going to be blowing in between the two houses. As we get to the front yard, the uh, homeowner wants a few citrus trees, so we'll consider that. And then again, salt tolerant plants in the front maybe aren't so necessary, but having, uh, you know, uh, we have some variety to change there, if you will. Come on down to the street and I'll show you what we've started to accomplish there. Uh, friends, this is going to be our short side of the property line here where it comes up to meet the driveway. So uh, we want something on this hill to really flow down and look like it uh, softens both walls. The, the uh, neighbor has done a wall on the inside. Ours is on this outside, if you will. And so I think low plants are going to help there. The razzleberry or lower petalum and the lantana we've used as a marker at the street and repeated them somewhat over here. You see the beautiful burgundy of the lower petalum the beautiful color here of lantana that'll fill in. And then we've come in with some roses right under the mailbox. Now when this gets mulched, it'll look better. But what I want to show you, naturally, I think you're kind of looking at this big black mound of rich soil. And our game plan here is to leave it mounded and this be the vegetable garden for the homeowners. We've got 
an oak tree canopy that comes over and we've got this filtered light and some intense sunlight. So we're trying to put the vegetable garden out here, but hide it or conceal it with a layer of two of colorful plants on the front side. Does that make sense? Hopefully. So our vegetables in here, we go down this way. We come back here with our backdrop, the fashion azalea, some colorful ginger, and more of our shade plants tucked in here. So uh, again, this is our storage area. We've got irrigation, so we're, things are being well watered there, and we get to apply them to the back. While the guys are installing the plants we've set up, I thought it'd be neat to meet with custom pavers expert, uh, Brian Collins. Brian, how's it going? It's going good, Gary. We're just uh, finishing up this wall here, leveling out the cap. This looks great compared to what we had to begin with, huh? The oh, railroad yes. ties? Yes, this will uh, this will really hold in their dirt. Um, gives them a nice look. A and nice it's permanent. It'll last forever. It'll, yeah, it'll be here for a very long time, very long time. Fine job. Um, maybe you can really reflect on the construction you did on the side with the ramp and the wall and the steps. Yeah, we can, we can go look at that. Tell us about the installation. Well, this sidewalk and the wall out front here was, was a whole lot more work than the little wall out here in the back. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. The steps, that's where you began. The steps is where we began. We began with the, the wall coming around from the house, the inside of the wall, getting, getting to a certain point, and then building the steps up to an elevation where we thought the sidewalk wouldn't be quite so steep. It seemed like that bottom layer is, is that, the that That bottom layer of, of the wall is the most important. If you don't get that level and setting right, the rest of the wall is not going to go in right. Now when it came to it, we eliminated, I mentioned these two steps we had here previously in the design. Was that a plus or a minus for you? I think a plus for us, uh, and I think a plus for the homeowner as well. Okay. It would be a lot easier for her if she's carrying something up through here not to have to take maybe one or two more steps. I think that was our main point. Yeah, all the work is down there at the beginning. Right. Once you get the up ramp there. Kinda. I like the wing walls that you put in for stabilization. What about the brick walk? The pavers. The brick walk, we wanted to try to have just a nice flowing sidewalk. Um, not a lot of pattern. This is a, a running bond pattern, which makes the bricks. You can turn them and, and carve them. Gives you a nice little detail. What button. about the soft sand that was so dry and powdered? The soft sand is, is always an issue when you're working by the beach. Uh, we, we first came in and wet it and compacted it down. And then the setting bed we used for the pavers, we used a uh, crushed lime rock material. And so you feel like that's stable enough to, to be here? Oh yeah, last. it's it's here. It's going to be here for a very long time. Brian, maybe on a scale from uh, 1 to 10 even, would this be something that uh, a homeowner could do on a, a weekend or a week? No, it, it would take a homeowner quite a, quite a long time to do this this part of the project here. I agree. The wall in the back, maybe. Maybe a homeowner could do that. It's a little easier, but this here is just pretty hard work. It's something you'd want a professional to do and and do it do right. Do it right. Yeah, and, and really you have, and our hat's off to you. Uh, again, the size of the stone to dictate the size of this wall, the stepping and the steering that you've put in uh, are unique because you've used uh, the wall to make the steps out of, and that's yeah. great. Yeah, we took the bigger pieces of the wall and cut them down, made them straight, and then staggered the steps up. Uh, Brian, I hope that we can only make your work look better with landscape. And I'm sure you will. It'll add a little more color to it. Appreciate it. Okay, we're still in the shade here, and I think Aztec is really going to help us kind of bring some, some contrast in here. You notice how the walkway has a curve or a movement to it. Let's use the Aztec to and accent that curve to get plants on this side to the right and then back to the left. I want to show you what we've done up, up top here because uh, you remember, I mean, with this, just this little square landing, the thoughts were that a curve helps kind of make that feel better. You see the lantana, how it moves from one side and then down to our natural little beach dune area. Okay, let's see how we can use the Aztec grass. I, I have some smaller sagos that we might place under here too. But the idea is that we, we swing out and maybe we'll do two rows so that we add some emphasis. I'll connect it over here and that type curve and then I want to jump back under the holly tree heading towards the sunlight. When we get out here we'll be using full sun plants. 
Okay, this is the part where, like I said, we see the full sun and the shade during most of the part of the day. Against the neighbor's block wall here, let's come in with a, a nice red rose that's gonna be uh, vivid during the warm season. And then I wanna use some other ground cover material to actually bleed down the hill, if you will, and just kinda head towards you in a curve this way. Then I'll pick one more plant type and bring it from here all the way down like that. Let's see, nothing tall. We wanna be able to stay low. We've got really this Sergeant's Juniper, this low juniper that's gonna look good too. Nice lime green color. Check the specs on it if you will. It's what we call a low spreader. I mean, you can see that it stays with an overall low height. It prefers the full sun. The junipers are also salt tolerant. That's a good point to mention. And uh, with the lantana, let's set some of those up, see what they look like. I'm making some fine tune adjustments, which is really a necessity once you get your plants in. And I like these six inch high pops because they come up over the juniper and provide this good head to head coverage. We're looking good all the way up the hill. I think you'll enjoy the way it looks as the homeowner might see it from up top, the upper deck looking down, as well as the curb appeal from the street. The beds and the plants just come right out to you and allow for that presentation. Uh, friends, it's time to talk nightscaping or landscape lighting in this case. Um, we've got this beautiful arrangement of the steps coming down on both sides and so we want to enhance that. At the homeowner's request, we also want to show, out the, or show off the address as much as possible. So with the, one of the floods here, I'm going to pull this in uh, close to the, the sign so I can try to blow up a little bit of beam onto the address while also enhancing or trying to pick up this palm tree. Now that's one palm. Another feature will be this palm tree here. So we need to do some uplighting that will enhance the canopy or the trunk here without getting in your eyes as you descend the steps. That's important. Now another desired effect that we can achieve with the spotlights are that of some down lighting instead of everything up like we mentioned. I'm gonna hide this spotlight here under the stairwell to provide a downward spot in this area that I think will look good and it will somewhat match or mimic what we have working across the driveway. Now to splash a 15 foot radius of light, we'll use the illuminator and place it in the landscape somewhere like this and it can be relocated or moved or adjusted. But here's the point, it's simply that a 15 foot radius of light will hit, hit onto the driveway and just tip this edge of the uh, walkway. Now let's come up and show you what we have in store for a combination of the walk and the trees. Next we'll talk about our D lighter, or what we call a bell lamp lighter. Uh, really these are ideal for the landscape. Again, they can be relocated, adjusted, or moved. So we use a, leave about three foot of extra slack. And I wanna, what I want to achieve with this is a little bit of overhang, about a 10 or 12 foot radius we have here. And we'll use those to alternate left and right. You see the yellow flags up the walkway. No straight lines will enhance the curves. Now for the holly trees themselves, the wall lighter will be used, or we call these a can light because it looks like a can. Well, the beauty of these is that we can turn it toward where most of the viewing will be and shield the light so that it won't hit into your eyes. And then these can be adjusted or tweaked, rolled backward or forward to achieve that desired look. If you were gonna use this on a wall, you could also lean the back to spread the beam or tilt it down lower to the object or the wall to thin the beam down. So all the holly trees will be uplit. And again, the bell lamps kind of lighting our way up the pathway. I can't wait to get these installed and see the effect that it will achieve. Well, now comes the colorful part of the program, and that is really to the mulch. And our choice here today is grade A eucalyptus mulch, and there are many benefits, 
but one particular in this project is dealing with the slope. You see, this mulch is shredded. It's not chipped. So it actually, being interwoven, it kind of locks in with itself and it won't float or blow away with our steep incline. That's really important. Now, when we get things mulched, we'll take a look at before and afters. I think you'll enjoy it. It's always neat when a project comes together and really meets or exceeds our expectations as a contractor, but also hopefully the homeowners. You see, at the homeowner's request, we came in with a, a large azalea packed a little tight so that we could hide or somewhat conceal the vegetable garden. You see the raised area there. I don't know if you remember the, the good soil that we have there. So anything planted with a little bit of afternoon sunlight should benefit and do well, yet there's some screening or buffering. We've taken this odd shaped area, utilized the curves to create some interest and movement. Now, also this would be good for maintenance because you don't just come in, this is what we call the big, a big bed area. We wouldn't just want to fill it with plants. We've utilized the space so that it has flow, direction, movement, contrast, color, benefits. Now, you may have noticed in this landscape, there is no turf grass, no high maintenance mowing. We've used again what we call the big bed theory. But take note of the movement that we have presented here. We've really got a pretty narrow stretch, maybe 15 to 17 feet wide. And so this is where the curves play an essential role. If, if you were to learn anything about flow, this would be a great application because from your angle, you should see these plants flowing right down towards you and showing that curved linear movement or flow in that direction. It looks better as we go up. I think you'll agree, we went up top and pointing down on this, you can see the movement of the Aztec grass behind me and flowing across the walk. Remember, our design was to give some curve or curve linear movement to the pathway or the ramp so that it wouldn't be so boring, so plain. So from up top, it looks good. And even standing back here, looking down, I just have the feeling that the front yard landscape at the driveway and curve holds our attention in, gives a beautiful backdrop to this uh, tunneling, if you will. Now, we're between two houses, so we're limited. But with the placement of trees left and right, we're kind of creating that little canopy or the peek through and uh, providing direction here for the walkway. Our time clock is installed over here for our lighting system. The homeowner will need access to get to that uh, to adjust the lights if they need to. We didn't really talk about how we've staked these trees, but behind me, the ocean, just a little distance away, I can feel that air coming through it. It's gonna be like a tunnel. So these trees, especially in the winter season, if you have a northeaster, uh, they're gonna be beat a little bit. We've come in with a steel rod and then some air conditioned insulation to soften them. And we've driven a three quarter inch steel rod down the back of these trees and secured them to this. Uh, that steel will not blow out of there. So I feel like these trees are staked good. And instead of having wires and flags and all that, We've got a steel rod that's really somewhat hidden, almost looks similar to the, the trunk. So in a cosmetic way, it does the job and doesn't look so offensive, if you will. And it's not dangerous for little ones. African iris, the Indian hawthorn that we didn't really talk about, but it is cold tolerant, I mean, uh, salt tolerant as well. And we splash some little sago palms in here, here, and another one. We do that triangular thing with Sago palms with color, with our Aztec, and then with our trees to bring the whole picture together. We hope the ideas here today have helped. I'm Gary Allen. I'll see you soon.